the way of the Spirit. Jesus, we come to thee with joy. The joy of meeting me should more and more fill your lives. It will. Your lives must first of all be narrowed down more and more into an inner circle with me, the three of us. And then as that friendship becomes more and more engrossing and more and more binding, then gradually the circle of your interest will widen. You know, my wife and I are gradually, she's becoming more involved in the ministry that I do. And I enjoy that. I really am excited to see the differences that have come about already and as we begin to move into this um, what we call afterwards a video series that uh, will be specifically about both of us learning from a, a pastor that I'm really interested in you know sitting at I, I always call it sitting at his feet you know learning as the old Jewish tradition was that you sat at the feet of the rabbi you know or the sage or the, the person that uh, was teaching and you wanted to, in Chabad, which is a Jewish Orthodox tradition, in Chabad they say, uh, you want to watch his, you want to see him tie his shoes. Because it's kind of like in the Western culture, we say everybody puts their pants on the same. Well, in Jewish way of saying it is, you want to see him tie your shoes. <laughs> it means the same thing. You just want to see them in their normal everyday venue. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's not. <laughs> but I'm kind of excited to see my wife, you know, and I develop together you know, in this new venue and then express it also on video you know, to see how the differences occur you know, within our lives. So I'm looking forward to see what Jesus would do with us as we embark on sharing it with some people on videos. But in your life, as God seems maybe to be cutting out some of your distractions from the world and your attractions to maybe political maneuverings or social occasions or some type of involvement in the world, it might be that he's compressing you to make you more quality than quantity. Because a lot of times God will kind of eliminate all the extra junk that's in your life in order to focus in on what's really important in your life, which is Jesus, obviously. And so, if he's doing that with you, don't be surprised if you feel a little uncomfortable about it, because sometimes you get a little attached and you don't know it to these things that you think you need, that you want, or you, you used to do. I know for myself, you know, we used to go on long drives, you know, and with the new economy the way it is and the fact that we've gone down from our normal income to very limited we don't go on long drives <laughs> as a matter of fact we hardly get a chance to visit relatives or family at all but God has used this time to bring more of a smaller circle of intimacy in what he's doing in my wife and I's life which has been very good I think to see how as we're maturing in the Lord and in our life we're also involving God more in it and that's what God wants to do with you is that he wants you to be more open to his involvement with you than to maybe setting him aside only for a, a Sunday or a occasional time in the morning but he wants you to be in communion with him constantly because he really is a lot I mean, Jesus is real the more that you acknowledge that or look for that, the more you find that true in your everyday being. For the present, do not think of it as a narrow life. I have my purpose, my loving purpose, in cutting you away from other work and interests for the time. To work from large interests and a desire for great activities and world movements to the inner circle life with me is really the wrong way. That is why so often when, through all these activities and interests, the soul finds me, I have to begin our friendship by cutting away the ties that bind it to the outer and wider circle of influence. When it has gained strength and learned its lessons on the inner circle, then it can widen its life, working this time from within to without, taking then to each contact and each friendship the inner circle influence or 
who I am. And this is to be your way of life. This is the way of the Spirit. And man so often under, misunderstands that. I've seen many times, in, especially in uh, Calvary chapels, in many ministries that presume that somehow numbers is success. Where reality is, is that the pastor needs to develop his personal life and then communicate that. If he doesn't, the numbers mean nothing because it's just a, a crowd that's there rather than a growing, vibrant body of believers that's going to go out and do the things Jesus wants them to do. And the heart of a minister has to be to see those to want those to know God more than they know God themselves so that they might be greater than he is. And if we aren't like that, if we don't find ourselves in that kind of humility, then we really shouldn't be in ministry because it's not about us. It's not about us knowing God. That's for just growing as a normal believer. But if you're in ministry trying to help others to develop their relationship with God, then you should be all about Jesus and what he can do with and for the person as opposed to what you get and what you feel and what you want and how you try to make this work or make that work and grow numbers. Because in this ministry that God has given me, it's about one. One person. Who that is, I have no idea. What I'm supposed to do with that person, not a clue. What I should be ready for, having a knife, having a foggiest idea. But I do know this, that if I can't do it for the one person, I can't do it for the many. So we're always about one person, whoever that person may be. And we will always speak to one person rather than speak to a hundred people. And that one person will know that God has spoken to them, even if the hundred do. So never confuse numbers for direction or blessing. Always recognize that God is at work, both do it to will of his good pleasure, so that you may not always know just how effective you are or defective, but that God takes care of the directive in your life and choosing to point you where he wants you to go. It can be challenging but it can be very exciting. And the beauty of it is, is that it makes life worth living. It makes every moment a unique contact with the divine or the Holy Spirit or the uniqueness of who God is. And maybe Jesus in disguise or angels unawares or God moving in the heart of a person that you never thought you would touch. And yet they're transformed right before your eyes. Hmm. I know, sometimes I find myself almost content to not do anything and just sit, listen, look, and think about Jesus. And you know, maybe sometimes that's enough in ministry for you and I. Maybe. <laughs>